Hey guys, so today we're going to do section 8.5 counting principles. For some of you that are in STAT or AP STAT or have seen some probability problems before, some of this will be review. And if it's new to you, that is fine. So take a minute here and read this first example. Can you think of two pieces of paper that have numbers from 1 through 8 on each of them? One on each, and they would add to be 12. If you thought 4 and 8, so your first card had a 4 on it, and your next card had an 8 on it, that would work. That would be an example. So here, the counting principle, a simple counting problem, all you do is just add up all the possibilities. You are replacing the card that you take out. So you could get double. So for example, 6 and 6 is an example, because that card that has a 6 on it can be replaced. So listed out here each of these columns shows you the different examples that add up to 12 so there are five so the answer for this how many different ways can you obtain the sum of 12 with the numbers one through eight the answer would be five so that's a simple counting problem because you can list out all the possibilities all right fundamental counting principle Your first event can happen in M1 ways and your second event M2 ways. So the number in each, you just multiply them. So if, if there's five possibilities in the first and eight possibilities in the second, the total number of ways for each of those events happening, five times eight would be 40. Take a look at this example here. How many different pairs of letters from the English alphabet? How many letters are in the alphabet? Number of alphabet numbers is 26. So 26 and you're still doing a second pair they didn't say anything about order you can use any of the other 26 letters so 26 times 26 so different pairs the total number of them would be 676 if we have some restrictions involved important application of the fundamental counting principle if elements are arranged and we need some type of order it is permutation so first element is first one is second one is third and so on so let's take a look at an example i always find examples to help me with definitions better all right so how many permutations of the letters a b c d e and f are possible how many letters are there so one two three four five there's six letters here so order matters so your first spot to place the order you have six possibilities your next one that first one was taken away so your next one you only are left with five i just picked a but it could be any other ones once that one is removed then you only have four what is this starting to look like if you notice here first position second all the way to the sixth position by the sixth one there's only one remaining so in your mind if you were thinking factorial you are correct the total number of permutations ways to order a b c d e and f is 720 six factorial all right so that was the most basic of permutation so write these two definitions down permutations of n elements el elements are the no total number taken r at a time if you notice here n minus r factorial they just write out this there's no denominator what the heck are they talking about here this n minus r plus one that just means your numerator is always going to be a bigger number so n factorial you are taking n all the way down to one however you are taking away n minus r i always find an example to help so if i said six permutation two using the formula six factorial over six minus two factorial so six factorial over four factorial what this definition is saying is six minus five and you would stop there five is the number right above one more than four i'm just going to show you why that works the denominator four factorial your factorials cancel. So this here is telling you to stop one more than the denominator. So six times five, this would be 30. 
So let's take a look at this. Find the number of permutations of eight horses taking three at a time. Go ahead and solve this problem. So they told you permutations here. So eight horses taking three at a time. So three is your R. Eight over eight factorial over eight minus three factorial. Using that rule, I'm just showing it again. All you need to do is eight, seven, and six because the denominator was five factorial. This would result in 336 permutations. Distinguishable permutations. So there's more things that you need to um, take into account. So for example, if you have something that is repeated over and over and over again, so if they're talking about ways to order letters of a word and there is a word that has multiple letters that are the same. So we have to take that into account. So the distinguishable permutations, write this down here. Each of these denominators here is just counting the same number of pieces. It'll make more sense in the example that I just show coming up. So how many distinguishable ways can we um, order or write out the letters from the word banana? So how many current letters do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six letters. So that's going to be our N. However, how many separate letters are we using to make up banana? We just have a B, an A, and an N. So for B, there's only one B, three A's, and two N's. So these are our N1, N2, and N3's. So distinguishable permutations. Six factorial, the total, over each of these. One factorial, which seems silly, but always do that. Three factorial and two factorial multiplying all of this out. So using that rule again, six, five, four, three factorials can cancel. So six times five times four over two times one, that will result in 60 different ways to order all of that out. Remember that was different than six factorial way back when, when we were dealing with A, B, C, D, E, and F, because we have multiples of A and N, so we have least amount of them. If you want to take a look at the 60 different ways, those are all of the ways you could arrange the letters of banana without any repeats. So 60 ways there. All right, go ahead and try this example here. How many distinguishable ways the letters from mitosis can be written? Just like we did. Go ahead and take a minute and solve this one out. All right. And their total number of letters is seven this time. There's only one M, T, and O, but there's two I's and two S's. So the total number of ways you could write out this is 1,260. All right, combinations. This is where order does not matter. So for example, if you are trying to come up with a NHS 3v3 basketball team, if you had you and your two friends on your team and someone else chose you first and the other two later on, doesn't matter who was picked first, second, or third in your team, having the three of you all on the same team, doesn't matter what order is about, order doesn't matter, so combination. So for example, our letters, if we have A, B, C, and B, A, C, doesn't matter, it's still the same exact set of numbers, same elements in your list here. So order does not matter for combinations. So right, take a minute and write down this definition and formula here. Let's take a look at this example here. How many different ways can three letters be chosen from these here? All right, so there's five different letters and we're choosing three of them. So placing that into the formula, five factorial, over five minus three, which is two factorial, and then we have this added r, so three factorial. So multiply this out, five times four times three factorial, because we have a three factorial here, they cancel, two times one, 20 divided by two is 10. Notice you're dividing more in combinations compared to the permutations one, so your answer is going to be less, because Permutations order matters, so there's more different ways of 
writing out those three different letters here, A, B, C, C, B, A, B, A, C, all of them mean the exact same group of three letters. All right, let's take a look at this example here. Take a minute and read it and come up with how you would solve this. There are 52 cards in a deck, and you are trying to see how many combinations there are of a poker hand of five cards. So go ahead and solve out 52, choose five. Using the combination formula, 52 factorial, grab our factorial signs here, over 47 factorial, which came from 52 minus five, and we cannot forget about five factorial. So writing all this out, 47 factorials, and both of them, they cancel. Go ahead and multiply all of this out here to find out how many different five card hands are in a 52 deck of poker cards. All right, so the total amount of hands that could be dealt in a deck of cards is right here. All right, guys, that is all we have for section 8.5. Let me know if you have any questions. Please remember, if order matters, you use permutation. If order does not matter, you use combinations. Thanks, guys.